So this time we're going to do something a little bit different on Spur. Instead of an investigation, we're actually going to alter some electronics, specifically some spirit boxes. Now this segment is very much inspired by BigClive.com. He has an absolutely fantastic channel, YouTube channel, devoted to weird and wonderful electronics that he gets from all around the world, um, some from Poundland and Pound World, and some from China. He takes them apart and he shows you all of the electronics that are inside. It's very, very interesting and I highly recommend it. So anyway, the two things that we we'll have, we have this SB7, which a good friend of mine, Gordon, who is also a paranormal investigator, would like me to alter so that he can turn on and off the antenna using a little switch. So that's Gordon and he has his own channel and he's called Ghost Hunter Number One. I highly recommend that. But we're not going to do that at the moment. What we are going to do is take a look at this old-ish radio that I got on eBay. Um, it's marked as working, but it does have some problems with it. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to try to one turn it into a spirit box, and two also add a switch to this so that I can turn the antenna on and off. So we'll have a look at that now. Okay. Obviously this isn't new. It has been used. Um, the advert on eBay says that it works but that it has very low volume. Um, so that could be potentially just a, a problem with the variable uh, resistor here, the potentiometer, and hopefully just cleaning that will fix the problem. So first of all what we'll do is we'll have to put some batteries in. Now what's strange about this radio is there's two sets of batteries. There's four go in here, and then there's two that goes in there. Now I don't know, I'm going to guess that two of them are for the clock. That's here, and uh, four of them are for the radio, but I'm not sure, and it doesn't really matter. So let's get the battery in and see how this is going to work. You can plug it into the wall as well, but um, because I'm going to be poking around inside, I'd rather not do that. Oh well, actually the clock's on now and them four have been put in, so I'm not I'm not sure what batteries power what. That's a funny fit. One thing I have noticed is the screws on the back. This one's different. Um, first of all, I thought it's because somebody had been inside of it already and they lost a screw and just grabbed another one, but actually it's different because this is where the aerial or the antenna connects to. That's why that's different. And also, also these screws here are tamper-proof, which is very strange for a radio. I, I don't know why they've done that. So let's give it a try. Turn it on, it's on kilohertz, turn the volume up, and there is nothing, no sound at all. FM, nothing there either. Yep, so there's no sound at all. That's not a good start. Um, there's a headphone jack there, let's try that. Slip the antenna up as well. Oh, some headphones. That's on maximum volume right now, and you can barely hear it. Right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that it's a dirt, dirty resistor, variable resistor, and I'm going to clean that. One second. Oh, 
Okay, so what I'm going to use is this WD-40 Specialist Fast Drying Contact Cleaner, which is good for electrical contacts. And squirt a little bit of that in and see if it helps. That's if it actually goes in. It's non-conductive. Oh, that's, that resistor feels as though it's going past the um, end point. No, that hasn't helped. So it's time to take it apart. Okay. So this is the ribbon cable that I was on about, um, I don't know, there's one, two, three, four, five, about 15 wires in here, and one of them, somewhere it'll be marked the letters M and U, um, and that's mute. Hopefully I can find that, but yeah, all of this is not a lot of space to manoeuvre. I thought of another way to check to see... Um, which of these is mute. Now what I can do is hook this up to my multimeter and check voltages as the, cha the channels are scanned. And when I see the voltage change when it settles down, it's probably a good indicator that that one's mute. That's it, I think. That's registering zero volts. And as soon as I start scanning, there we go. It's that one. Now that's it there. I've isolated it. If you can see that, zoom in a little bit. Yeah, a little bit of pressure on the comes on. Now, I don't know if you can hear that. But let's do a scan. And it worked. That is the mute line. Excellent. So the sound stays on now as you scan in the channels. So now that that is fixed. So now all we need to do is fix the, um, the volume problem and we're golden. So I've been going around in circles for a while. Um, and I think I may have found at least one of the issues. I'll just zoom in. This is, that chip there is an audio amplifier. It's nine pins. It's getting five volts going into it, which is within its operating range. And it needs to have capacitors to support it. Now I've checked these ones here with the multimeter and the or at values that are very similar to what's written on the side. This one here, it's so far off that it's actually not even reading as a capacitor. And if I do a resistance test, I get something absurd 
like uh, 7.6 mega ohms so I've got a suspicion that that may be broken it may not be but I'm going to zoom out again change it with one of these capacitors and it just so happens I have the 220 microfarad ones right there just make some room for myself um, these ones are rated 16 volts and that one in there I believe is 4 volts so it's good enough so let's get that unsoldered Come on, you little bugger. One side. And now the other. There I go. Now I'm just going to double check this to see if... Uh, look that is registering as that is registering as nothing it's not registering at all that is really dead. Dead, 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 dead. Okay. Let's get the, the solder wick out. Yep. The heat really travels up that solder wick quite quickly. Copper is very conductive. In many ways. So these are the uh, capacitors. 16 volts, 220 microfarads. be great if this is the problem really would I'd be as happy as a pig in a happy place Is this going to work? Well, I'm going to say I think that it will work. Well, no, because the volume is on maximum and it will be bloody loud. Well, boys and girls, guess what? It's working. So, I've returned several hours later. Um, just to recap, I it disabled the mute so it actually scans like a spirit box I also fixed the original problem um, where the volume was too low by replacing the capacitor and the last remaining problem which I didn't think I'd actually be able to solve because I thought it would be integrated inside of a chip 
is that when it scans, it makes a beeping sound. I'll show you what I mean. So it is scanning the channels. The thing is, it's also doing a beeping sound, which is annoying. But what I did find interesting is no matter how loud you have the volume, which changes the volume of the radio station, the beeping always remains the same volume. So I had the suspicion that that beep was being injected on top of the, uh, the radio. So I traced back, I looked up the, the different chips that are here, I soldered on a connection here, and from this connection you get just the radio signal. You don't actually get any of the audio signal. You don't get any of the beepers, sorry. Um, so I traced this round and backwards and forwards and I eventually found the place in the circuit that injects the beeping. Now I'll demonstrate that now. I've got a lead here, which is essentially a short circuit. And what I'm going to do is short circuit out a resistor, which is right here. And you know that beeping, it's hard to get it right on. The beeping will go away. But this, the radio still stays there. Looking further at this, this area here, there was a little bit of tape underneath. And I thought that connected to that and that connected to that. But obviously it zags across and only because I peeled that off could I see what it is. And I think if I cut that trace, we will get rid of the beeping as it scans. So let's have a listen. Right now we've got the beeping. And we've got the radio station. And lo and behold, we have scanning without beeping. Finally, I've fixed all three problems. So uh, now I'll put it back together. Actually, I can't put it back together because although I've made it into a spirit box now, I did originally want to um, have a little switch on the side or on the front or whatever that could turn the aerial, the antenna on and off. Um, I might as well do that all at the same time. So, the way that works, now I'm going to take all the batteries out because um, the antenna, when the case is closed, pushes up against that and makes an electrical connection. So what I need to do is somehow have a switch that disconnects that. Actually. So I need to put the whole thing back together now. So I've managed to put most of it back together. Um, this is a lot more tricky than I thought it would be, but um, I've gotten there. Um, luckily, there's some screen, there's some screws at the back that have pushed against the screen, so the screen now works. So what I've done is I've um, drilled a hole here, drilled it with it, um, and then we're going to put this switch in there, but it doesn't quite fit, so I'm going to have to chew down on this a little bit. Now this aerial is actually disconnected at the moment but as you can hear it works just fine. So that's pretty, it's not that useful.
world of difference. Yeah, it makes a difference. So I'm just going to mark that actually. So here we have the radio that has been repaired so that the sound actually works. It's been converted to be able to scan through the channels like a spirit box. And I've also disabled the um, little beeping sound that happens when it does change channels. And to be honest, it actually works better than an SB7 now because it doesn't have the annoying um, ch -ch 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 sound in between the channels. It's a lot more smoother. So I'll just turn the radio on. And I'll start Calder. the spirit I'm looking box. forward to add door. Spinning around hours. So now that's scanning through the channels automatically. There's no beeping sound. There's no strange um, sound like a spirit box. Sometimes not. From this face for the tail cameras show. So that's working well. Unfortunately, um, it doesn't completely disable reception because even the wiring inside of the radio acts as an antenna. So what I'll do is I'll simulate it by detuning from a radio station. Them in wills. So by leaving a gift, you'll help the British Heart Foundation save even more lives. And maybe one day... So you can hear the difference there. Sure. So anyway, that's the finished thing. Took us about two hours. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.